Now let us introduce surface integral. For a surface integral, or integral of a function over a surface, we have the following scenario. The surface integral or the integral of a function like f over the surface is with parametric equation R parametric representation R of U and V can be found using a double integral. Is the double integral over surface S of function F X Y Z D S. This guy can be written as the double integral over region D. You're going to substitute x, y, and z into the function f of x in u and v, y in u and v, z in u and v, or in general, r of u and v times the magnitude of the partial derivative of r with respect to u cross partial derivative of r with respect to v, d, a, for example, suppose I ask you to compute the surface integral or the integral of function. My function is given to me as f of x, y, and z equals to x squared over the surface s, which is unit sphere. x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals to 1. Very well. So we're going to follow the formula, right? Our goal is to find the double integral of function f, which is x squared ds over surface x. So we need the parametrization for this sphere. Remember that the parametrization for this sphere x was rho, but the rho is just one. Here you have a unit circle, one sine phi cosine theta y is 1 sine phi sine theta and z is 1 cosine phi. Very good. Theta ranges between 0 to 2 pi. And since we don't have any restriction on phi, it ranges between 0 to pi. So this guy becomes the double integral here. You can just substitute that right away, 0 to 2 pi, 0 to pi. My x is sine phi cosine theta. So I get sine squared phi cosine squared theta. And I need the magnitude of the cross product from previous example that we did for the surface area. We saw that the magnitude of r r phi cross r theta is equal to 
a sine phi, but a is equal to one. So here you have sine phi, you're going to add sine phi d phi d theta. This guy is this here. Very good. So let's do the computation. By Frobenius theorem, we can separate this. You have zero to two pi of cosine squared theta, d theta, and you have integral zero to pi sine sine squared of phi sine of phi d phi. Very good. So this guy can be written as the integral zero to two pi. Here you have one plus cosine two theta divided by two d theta. Here you have zero to pi and your sine squared of phi. Uh, let us write it as one minus cosine squared. So you can use the use of sine phi d phi. This is theta divided by two and plus one fourth sine two theta. Theta is bounded between zero to two pi. And for this guy, if you take the integral with respect to sine, you have negative cosine phi. And here, if you use u sub, you get negative one third cosine to the third of phi. And phi ranges between zero to pi. So this guy becomes two pi over two. In either case, it's going to be zero. And if I plug in pi here, I get negative, negative one. And here minus a third times negative one. Minus, if I plug in zero, I get negative one minus a third. So let me move it a little bit up here. We get a pi and one plus a third minus we have a plus 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 four thirds so we get eight pi over three let me see if i make the calculation correct Oh, I forgot this one. So it, it should be a plus sign. Am I right? Yes. And it should be a plus sign. Okay, let me fix this one, everybody. Plus a third, and it's going to be negative a third. So you get one. So here you have negative a third, and one minus a third, which is two thirds. So now we get four pi over three. Okay, let's fix this one. This minor mistake here. 